Hello, welcome to Marine Gurukul video series. We are pleased to present this video in which we shall try and learn as to what load line marks are, what is their importance, where are they marked, and if we have to draw them in the exam, how do we draw and explain the load line marks as far as the examination system is concerned. Before talking of load lines, let's define this term freeboard. Now freeboard of a ship is the vertical distance measured from the water line to the upper edge of a reference line called as the deck line. Now this deck line and the other load line marks which we are going to study soon are marked in accordance with the IMO convention called as International Convention on Load Lines, commonly referred to as Load Line Convention. This Load Line Convention was adopted on 5th April 1966 and came into force on 21st July 1968. Now, if you see this side elevation of a ship, now in this we have this line which has come here midships this line is called as the deck line we shall study about its dimensions its thickness in slides that follow now here we have the water line we already know that the depth of the ship's keel below the water line is called as the draft and the distance from the water line to the upper edge of this deck line is what is called as the freeboard. Why have we defined this term upfront? Because if you see this diagram, the underwater portion of the ship is responsible for displacing water which is providing the ship the buoyancy. And the enclosed volume in the freeboard region is the reserve buoyancy of the ship. And I'm sure we all understand the meaning of reserve buoyancy. It's the buoyancy which is up your sleeve, which will come to provide buoyancy if it, it is immersed in water because of either increased in displacement or because of any damage or, or to the ship's hull which may lead to ingress of seawater referred to as bilging. The deck line which is a very very important reference line for measurements is marked amidships which is midway between the forward and aft perpendiculars and is marked on each side of the ship. So if we have the file view of the ship here and this red line represents amidships, then the center of the deck line should be coincident with this amidship line. So it has the center of the deck line is amidships. Then where is it vertically located? Now, at amidships, if we assume the freeboard deck of the ship to extend out, cutting through the ship's side, the point where the upper edge of the freeboard deck would be meeting the ship side, outer, edge, outer side of the ship, that edge has to coincide with the upper edge of the deck line. So the upper edge of the deck line coincides with the upper edge of the freeboard deck amidships if it was assumed to be extending and meeting the outer side of the ship. It is 300 mm in length with its center being amidships and 25 mm in thickness. So if you see here, this is its center is amidships, length is 300 mm and thickness is 25 mm and the upper edge of this deck line is the reference for taking the measurements. It's the reference we have already learned for measuring the freeboard and it's also the reference for marking the load line marks. Now this deck line, of course it cannot be shifted longitudinally, it has to be amidships undoubtedly, but it can be the load line rules allow it to be shifted vertically and placed with reference to another fixed point if the need be. However, if the deck line has been relocated to a new level, 
then the free boards assigned to the ship will have to be corrected for such shifting or relocation of the deck line. The location of the reference point and the identification of the freeboard deck shall be in all cases indicated in the ship's load line certificate. So that's the place where you'll go to if you have any doubt about the freeboard deck or the reference from which the freeboards are marked. Now we come to load line marks and obviously the first question is what is the purpose of these marks? The main purpose of the load line marks is to prevent overloading of the ships. And if it does so, it will ensure minimum safety of life, property and environment. How? If the ships are not allowed to load beyond a certain draft, then they'll have a certain minimum freeboard. And if they have a certain minimum freeboard, they would have some minimum reserve buoyancy. And this reserve buoyancy would be handy, God forbid, if there's a damage to the ship's hull leading to bilging or the ingress of water. Under the load line convention, all ships, barring the exception stated therein, are required to have, so it's mandatory, are required to have load line marks which are assigned by the flag state, the country where the ship is registered. So the flag state itself may issue the load line certificate or it may be issued by a recognized organization like a classification society under the authority of the flag state. So basically the ultimate responsibility shall rest with the flag state. The load line marks together with the deck line. So now deck line becomes a package of the load line marks are marked on the ship amidships and each side. As per the free board under the provisions of the load line convention. So where would be the load line marks with respect to the deck line? We have already learned whether the deck line would be. The load line marks would be marked with respect to the deck line as per the free board that is assigned to the vessel under the provisions of the load line convention. These load line marks are painted in light color over dark background and in dark color over a light background so that they are very conspicuous and visible from a distance. Now we shall learn how to draw the load line marks. Now the load line mark consists of a ring. The load line mark itself consists of a circle or a ring whose outer diameter, outside diameter is 300 mm and the thickness of the ring is 25 mm. The center of the ring is placed amidships. If you remember, the center of deck line was also amidships. The center of the load line mark, the ring, is also amidships. At a vertical distance from the deck line, and which point of the deck line? The upper edge of the deck line. At a distance equal to the assigned summer freeboard of the vessel. Now here is the deck line. You can see what is the length of the deck line. It should be 300 mm. What should be the thickness of the deck line? 25 mm. And where is the center of the deck line? Amidships. The upper edge of the deck line, center of the deck line, if we come down vertically at a distance equal to the assigned freeboard of the ship. So here, where you see this laser pointer now, this becomes the center of the load line mark and the load line mark is drawn here like this. This circle or this ring rather is 25 mm thick and its outer diameter is 300 mm. This ring is intersected by a horizontal line which is 450 mm in length and again 25 mm in thickness. So it is a horizontal line which cuts this ring. Now this is 450 mm in length and 25 mm in thickness and the upper edge of this line it coincides passes through the center of the ring. So if you see the upper edge of this 
line will pass through the center of the ring and now we can mark the dimensions the thickness of the line and the ring are 25 mm the outer diameter of the ring we have already said is 300 mm and this horizontal line is 450 mm in length so we first mark the deck line with reference to the deck line we mark the load line mark comprising of a ring and a horizontal line cutting through the ring now having got the deck line and the load line mark the lines which shall indicate the load line assigned in accordance with the load line regulations shall be at right angles to another vertical line and that vertical line shall be 25 mm in thickness and marked at a distance of 540 mm forward of the center of the ring so here is the center of the ring so this line represents the line of the center of the ring we go 540 mm in the forward direction so it has to go in the forward direction forward of the ship at distance of 540 mm and here we draw another line which is 25 mm in thickness now the other load lines assigned to the vessel shall be marked perpendicular to this that means those marks will be in the horizontal direction now the length of this line vertical line shall vary from ship to ship because it will be dependent on the spacing between the load line marks all the load lines assigned to the ship extend forward of this vertical line unless expressly provided for so there will be some exceptions in which case some lines will be going aft also but primarily the line the load lines will be marked forward of this vertical line all the lines obviously if they are going to be at right angles to a vertical line they'll be horizontal by default the length shall be 30 mm and their thickness shall be 25 mm all the load line marks shall be horizontal they'll be at right angles to this vertical line most of them will be going in the forward direction of this vertical line there will be some which will be drawn afterwards also the length of each of those marks will be 230 mm and the thickness of each of those marks shall be 25 mm the summer load line mark of the ship is indicated at the same level as this 450 mm line here so the upper edge of this 450 mm line which was also the center of this ring is the level at which we'll have the summer mark why because if you see here this is the assigned summer freeboard and the depth of the ship below this would be the summer draft of the ship the summer load line mark shall be indicated by alphabet s and it shall be forward of this vertical line so that means in line with this 450 mm line here forward of it we'll have the summer mark 230 mm long 25 mm in thickness so here we have the summer load line mark of the ship it is this mark which should not be submerged when the vessel is floating or sailing in the summer zone the winter load line mark which shall be applicable when the ship is in the winter zone is indicated by the upper edge of a line marked by alphabet w needless to say it's the upper edge of each of those lines which represent their true position so it will be indicated by the upper edge of the line marked as w this winter load line mark shall be marked at a distance of 1 by 48th of the summer draft of the ship below the summer load line now we all know that the draft up to the upper edge of this summer load line represents the summer draft we take 148th of it and then from the upper edge of the summer load line we come down that much of distance and there we'll have the upper edge of the winter load line as you can see and it will be also marked forward of the vertical line so here we have the winter load line of the ship so the vertical distance between the upper edge of the summer line and the upper edge of the winter line is 1 by 48th of the summer draft of the ship 
The winter North Atlantic load line mark is not applicable to all the ships. It's assigned or applicable to only ships which are less than 100 meters in length and plying in the North Atlantic in the winter season. So if it's applicable, then it's marked at a fixed distance of 50 mm below the winter load line mark. It's indicated by upper edge of a line drawn forward of the vertical line and marked with alphabets W and A representing winter North Atlantic. As you can see now in the diagram, WNA coming up, but they shall be only on the ships to which it is assigned. And it will be assigned to ships which are less than 100 meters in length, plying in the North Atlantic during the winter season. Why? Because small ships in North Atlantic during winter season, since the weather is rough, you want more safety for them. And hence, the permissible draft is reduced or the required minimum freeboard is increased by way of bringing down WNA 50 mm below the W load line. A topical load line mark is indicated by the upper edge of a line marked with alphabet T. It's marked as the same distance as W was marked from S that is 1 by 48th of the summer draft but this is marked above the summer load line and again it's forward of the vertical line we can see in this diagram tropical mark coming up spacing between the upper edge of the summer mark to the upper edge of the tropical mark is same as the spacing between the upper edge of the summer mark and upper edge of the winter mark and in both cases it was 1 by 48th of the summer draft all these load line marks that we have studied until now shall apply to the vessel if the vessel is floating in sea water now, when a vessel goes to a river or a port, the density of the water may be different than what it would be at sea. So, to prevent any commercial loss because of change of density of the water inside the port, the vessels are allowed to load to a deeper draft to allow for the change in density so that when she sails out and moves to sea water, she should have the minimum required freeboard or she should not exceed the maximum permissible draft in seawater. For that, we also have a load line mark to indicate that fresh water load line mark in summer zone. It is indicated by the upper edge of the load line mark that is represented by alphabet F. It's marked above the vertical line. So here we have a line which will be now marked above of this vertical line. It's marked at a distance from the summer load line equal to the fresh water allowance of the ship. So above the summer mark equal to the fresh water allowance of the ship, we'll have the fresh water line. And what is fresh water allowance? Fresh water allowance of the ship is the change in draft of the ship when she goes from fresh water to sea water or sea water to fresh water. Now, this fresh water allowance will do more of it in stability. Its formula is also on the screen. Fresh water allowance in centimeters is the displacement of the ship divided by 40 times the TPC. And in millimeter, it will be displacement divided by four times TPC, whichever you are conversant with. So now you can see in the diagram at a distance equal to fresh water allowance. So from the upper edge of the summer mark to the upper edge of this line, which is above of this vertical line, the distance is equal to the fresh water allowance. It's marked with alphabet F and this is the fresh water load line in summer zone. Exactly the way we had a fresh water load line mark for summer zone, we also have a tropical fresh water load line mark which shall apply if the vessel is floating in fresh water in tropical zone. It's indicated by the upper edge of a line marked EF that is tropical fresh. It's also marked above this vertical line like the freshwater load line mark. It's marked again at a distance equal to the freshwater allowance of the ship but from and above the tropical load line mark. So the distance will be marked from the upper edge of the tropical load line and it will be marked as you can see here. So in this case the distance between the upper edge of this 
tropical load line mark and the upper edge of the tropical fresh load line mark will be equal to the fresh water allowance. Fresh water allowance formula we have already discussed and length of each of these load lines again we can review is 230 mm. Thickness of each of these lines is undoubtedly 25 mm. Sometimes in the exams, we may be asked to draw the load line marks either for port side or starboard side specifically mentioned therein. Just to cover that aspect, so, so though there is nothing special to teach about it, if we look at this side file of the ship, I'm sure we'll agree that if we are viewing this ship from outside, that is the boat or the jetty, then what we are looking at is the starboard side of the ship. And in this, we have the bow of the ship to our right. Midships, we'll have the deck line and the load line mark. And we've already learned that the, the load lines are marked forward of it. So that means in this case, in the starboard side, it will be like this. So if we have to draw the starboard side load line marks, load lines should be to the right of this load line mark. And we have already this is the expanded with dimensions we have already learned it and in this case what we have added here in this case are these two alphabets L and R now these are the alphabets of the assigning authority in this case LR stands for Lloyd register but L and R or these alphabets here whatever they may be would be the initials of the assigning authority so now if you have to draw for the port side I'm sure if we look at this elevation of the ship, now if looking from outside, this is the port side of the ship. And we have the bow to our left. Amidships, we'll have the deck line and ring. And load line mark shall be forward of the ring. As in this case, you can see here, with all of them pointing towards the forward of the vertical line, barring these two, which are pointing towards the aft. This we have already discussed in detail. And if we See, want to see a expanded form of it the port side load line marks will be like this wherein the load lines are drawn to the left of the disc so if you draw to the left of the disc they'll become for the port side if you draw to the right of the disc they'll become for the starboard side please remember tropical summer winter wna all are towards the forward of the vertical line fresh water and tropical fresh water are pointing to the aft of the vertical line as long as you can remember these things everything can then fall in place assigned summer freeboard the freeboard assigned is the distance measured vertically downwards amidships from the upper edge of the deck lines which is the reference to the upper edge of the related load line so if you want to know the winter freeboard it will be up to the upper edge of the winter load line mark. If you want to measure the tropical freeboard, it will be the, to the upper edge of the tropical load line mark, all measured from the upper edge of the deck line. Now, here we have the load line marks. Now, if this distance or freeboard is measured up to the summer load line mark, then it is called as the assigned summer freeboard. You can see here is the upper edge of the summer load line which is in line with this 450 mm line cutting the disc here is the upper edge of the deck line and the vertical distance between them is the assigned summer freeboard how do we get this assigned free, uh, summer freeboard actually the assigned summer freeboard of the ship is computed it's a calculated computed value in accordance with the load line convention and once it's computed then it is used for marking of the load lines and the assigned summer freeboard of the ship is indicated in the load line certificate of the vessel. We have learned about different load line marks, the summer, winter, tropical. Now as an operator, how would you know as to which load line shall apply to your ship at a given place and at a given time? The Annex 2 of the International Load Line Convention defines the boundaries of the zones, areas, and seasonal periods, so areas and the periods in which the respective load line applies. Underlying principle, of course, is allow the ships to load to a deeper draft or have lesser freeboard 
in areas of relatively fair weather. The zones and areas in Annex 2 are in general based on the following criteria. In summer zone, not more than 10% winds of force 8 on the Beaufort scale or more should be there. That means in summer zone, the winds more, not more than 10% of the wind shall exceed 34 knots of speed. What happens if you fail to meet this criteria? Then the zone will be qualified as winter zone. Typical. Not more than 1% of the wind of force 8 on the Beaufort scale or more. Not more than one tropical storm in 10 years in an area of 5 degrees square in any one separate calendar month in certain special areas of course there are some relaxations which are allowed now if you see the requirements of summer and tropical i'm sure all of us would agree that in tropical zone the weather is relatively fair as compared to the summer and that's why the tropical free board is less than the summer free board or the tropical draft is more than the summer draft chart there in annex 2 wherein all these boundaries are marked coordinates are also mentioned so at any point when you need to know if you have any doubt and you need to know in which zone your vessel is at that time you can go to annex 2 chart and figure out based on the ship's position and the time of the year you can figure out whether the vessel is in tropical zone winter zone or the summer zone here is the chart which is international load line zones and seasonal area charts. Now in this what we'll see is that there are some areas which are round the year summer zone or tropical zone. There are some areas which are seasonal. Seasonal means in some of the part of the year they may be summer, in the remaining they may be winter. Or in some part of the year they may be tropical, in the remaining they may be summer. Now if you see here, this is the summer zone. If you see this one which is now being highlighted is winter seasonal zone in some part of the year it will be winter zone in the remaining it will be summer likewise we have seasonal tropical zone here which will be tropical in some part of the year and summer in the remaining so we'll have some areas which will be round the year same zone some would be seasonal depending on the period of the year plimsoll line is named after Sir Samuel Plimsoll, an English politician and a social reformer. He was concerned with the unseaworthiness of the ships because of overloading and he devised a line to be marked on the ship side to indicate the maximum draft to which the ship could be loaded, ensuring that the ship had a minimum pre-board. And that line was referred to as or called as Plimsoll line. The modern day load line markings as a mark of respect to Sir Samuel Plimsoll, the disc, the round disc or ring of radius 300 mm along with the horizontal line of 450 mm is collectively called as Plimsoll mark. And this 450 mm horizontal line is called as the Plimsoll line. So in modern day marking, this is the disc, this is the plimsoll mark that we have. And out of this plimsoll mark, this line is called as the plimsoll line. We come to end of this video. Hope you find it useful. Please do write to us any feedback that you may have. Do share your comments and do subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching Marine Gurukul video series. Thank you very much.